so excited, so excited. We're starting forensic science, and this is um, Howie's first mini lesson. So let me kind of give you a quick overview of how things might look so that you guys kind of understand why I'm doing these and where this is all coming from, okay? So as you can see, this lovely big circle right here says scientific principles of crime investigation. Hopefully, you will notice that that is the title of unit one, okay? So this entire Prezi little, you know, presentation that I'm making for you guys is gonna be all unit one. So I'm gonna talk about the specific little key things that they talk about. So um, the first one, and they'll say intro to forensic science, I believe. Um, and each one of these circles are gonna talk about those different kind of um, mini parts to this unit. So just know that I'm gonna go over each one of those things, but we'll be coming back to kind of this main thing. So this is the main concept of unit one, those scientific principles of crime investigation. Um, so one thing I want you guys to know is that these mini lessons are really just an extra tool for you to um, help kind of solidify the information that you find in your text. Please know that you must read each of those little mini lessons, okay? They are, they're really short. You need to take notes. That stuff is gonna be found on your exam, okay? But what's so important is this is a great way to kind of see some visuals and hear some stories or see some YouTube videos based on what we're talking about but I did not include some of the examples that are in your text, which you'll see in the unit exams. So you must go through those unit exams, okay, I'm sorry, you must go through those little unit lessons, the, team, the small ones, take notes, and then use this as an extra tool. If you don't need them, that's fine, but if you do, it's kind of a nice way to kind of get, understand a lot of that information, okay? So let's, then let's begin, that being said, right? Scientific principles of crime investigation. So I am excited about this class and I'll be pretty goofy because I'm, you know, it's kind of cool to talk about all these little crime scenes, but how science relates to it. So forensic science, here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about, the first little lesson is forensic science. What is that? So I want to go a little bit deeper into kind of what that is. And you're, again, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff in your units. I'm just kind of reiterating things, giving you guys some background knowledge on it, give you guys some images to go along with. For forensic science, sometimes people are in immediately, their first thought is CSI, yeah, that's, that's what forensic science is. And to a point, it, it is. There's a lot of aspects, but at the same time, it's that's not really, you know, and actually you'll see a video towards the end, that's really not all that's encompassed in forensic science. There's a lot more to it. So the overall definition is using science to solve criminal and civil transgressions of the law. But my favorite part of definition is a very simple term, scientific examination of evidence. You guys are gonna notice that I'm gonna talk a little bit about evidence um, in this particular little lesson here, but the entire unit two, I believe, is all on evidence. So we're gonna pick apart evidence like no other. But this is a great way to just kind of understand what forensic science is, scientific examination of evidence. Scientific examination, which we'll talk about in just, a, you know, I think the next mini lesson, when you think about scientific, you know, kind of the scientific method, that's what a lot of forensic scientists are using in order to kind of examine evidence and figure out what it is, what part did it play in this crime, you know, and lead them to these next clues, so to speak, okay? Now, forensic science does include many different types of science, okay? So it's not like this own entity, it's actually this morphine of all these different types of sciences. Chemistry, you're gonna see a ton of chemistry in a forensic scientist's um, you know, job and in a forensic science science lab or criminal lab, okay? Um, so basically, or sorry, not criminal lab, crime lab, but you're gonna see lots of different chemistry going on, um, detecting different chemicals that are have been present at a crime scene, um, figuring out DNA, what belongs to who, and so forth. Biology is a huge part of forensic science because we're dealing with the anatomy of the body, so autopsies and different things that you have to know the anatomy, you have to know biological processes in the body and why this, you know, this happened and so forth. Okay, so biology is to me one of the biggest parts. And then physics, when you think about, you know, gunshots and um, angles of, you know, um, entering bodies and, and, you know, markings on the wall and from what trajectory and so forth. So there's a lot of physics involved, which is kind of and, you know, kind of a cool way to think about physics. And then earth science and computer science as well. So basically all these sciences kind of come together to make forensic science what it is, which is pretty cool, okay? All right, so let's talk just a little bit about evidence because you will see this in your first little lesson. 
Okay, evidence is key, because obviously that's what we build off of and we can figure out some of the answers to our questions, okay? Evidence is tangible aspects of a crime. Tangible, meaning you can touch it, you can see it, you can feel it, sometimes you can smell it, you can hear it. Those are tangible, okay? Something that's intangible is, you, you know, you can't see it, you can't feel it, stuff like that. So obviously there are so many different types of tangible evidence, so I'll give you kind of a little bit of you know, some of the evidence that we might look at, you know, later on. But weapons, soil, blood, pieces of fabric, bodies, footprints, all of those are different types of evidence, and there's many more besides that. Um, but we'll be looking at that and how to examine evidence and what goes on with that, because there's a lot to that. Here would be mo possibly a typical um, photograph of some of the evidence. You can see it's not just kind of a body or a gun. There is a gun here, but there's shoes, there's like blood back here, you know, something right here, a little piece of paper here. So there's all sorts of different types of evidence. And when we get into kind of what happens, you know, numbering it and really what you what you do with this evidence, um, I'll get into that a little bit later. But that's kind of like what you would see. And that evidence isn't just kind of one particular type. It actually covers a vast array of stuff. But one thing that lots of forensic scientists are looking for is trace evidence. These are evidence, tangible things that occur in really small amounts, okay? Could be hairs, could be drops of blood, okay? So things that maybe are almost microscopic, okay? Those are trace evidence. They're huge. So take, for instance, this picture. Before I had pulled it up, you're like, eh, yeah, I think I see a hand, whatever. And you look real close and you're like, wow, blood drops, okay? That's DNA in there. That's something that you can absolutely, pretty much instantly figure out who that belongs to. Why is this person's blood on this knife, okay? So that's trace evidence. Small amounts, sometimes microscopically small, but nonetheless, they can um, really do a lot for us, okay? All right, and then fingerprints are another type of evidence that we're gonna go into a lot more detail. Fingerprints are so huge because these are basically such a way to identify people, okay? Everyone has different fingerprints. So we'll talk more about that, but that's another form of you know evidence as well. Next. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this quick little um, kind of mini lesson here is basically what does a forensic scientist do? And I've got a video that's coming up that gives you guys kind of a good account of what a forensic scientist do because maybe you guys are actually interested in pursuing a career. So I want you guys to kind of understand a little bit more about what they actually do. So one thing to think about is these forensic scientists are expert witnesses. They testify in court. They must communicate with many people involved. So just kind of examine yourself if you're like, yeah, I want to be a forensic scientist, but I hate talking to people. Might not be a job for you, okay? So you have to make sure that, you know, you're able to communicate because you are kind of the go-between. You might find something, but maybe you need to talk to a witness. Maybe you need to talk to the first responder, the police that were ended up on this, you know, crime scene first. And you have to report what you find to the court. And, to, you know, most forensic scientists end up being... Um, you know, on the stands testifying, okay, because when they are doing these scientific experimentations on the evidence, they come up with an unbiased, um, you know, what happened or what this is and these facts that they have to testify, okay, so that's one big role of a forensic scientist. All right, I believe our video Crimes are solved by examining clues and developing evidence. On TV, it's all glamour. In real life, a forensic investigator like Eric Carita will tell you it takes patience and objectivity. My name is Eric Carita. I'm a forensic scientist and I process DNA evidence in criminal investigations. We apply the aspects of science with law. Every case is a puzzle. Every case has a number of pieces you need to put together. Every time you touch something, you're transferring your genetic material to that object. What we do is we look for evidence of possible DNA to either clothing or a knife, some type of DNA transfer. We then remove that DNA from that piece of evidence, process it, then make comparisons. A lot of the misconception is that forensic science is exactly like CSI, what you're gonna see on TV, and it's nowhere near that. You have your law enforcement, which uh, will do a lot of the processing of the crime scene, the collecting of the evidence, and then you have your scientists. There's firearms examiners, there's latent prints examiners, there's DNA examiners, and we stay within our niche. We are absolutely the unbiased individual 
within the process. There is no, we believe an individual did it. What it comes down to is, is the science good? The people of the state are relying on you to process evidence accurately and in an ethical manner. So later when you testify, you're testifying on behalf of science and the evidence. In high school especially, science was never something I was interested in. I had no intention whatsoever, even after graduating from high school, to go to college. I went, I worked in a mill for a couple years, and then I decided that I wanted to further my education, see where it could take me. I took an internship up at the Connecticut Forensic Lab, and then from there, it's, I knew there was absolutely nowhere else I wanted to be but here. You're constantly learning every single day through either a new piece of evidence or interaction with your colleagues. I'll have to call the submitting agency and let them know and they can take it from there. You need to be able to communicate all the information pertaining to any one particular case with each other so you can get a better understanding of the case as a whole. The most exciting aspect to the job is that you never know what type of case is going to come in, how high of a profile the case is going to be. I never thought I'd ever have a job where I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror and I say, I cannot wait to get to work. I cannot wait to get to work. It's that exciting. Cool, right? Okay, so I hope all of you guys can get a job where you say that. I love my job. But anyways, there gives you, that gives you a little bit of a, like, real life, here's what forensic scientists do, um, as compared to some of the stuff in CSI. And we'll get more into that. This is just the intro. So I wanted you guys to kind of have a good idea on what forensic science really is. So the next time we come back, we'll look at the next little mini lesson. And, um, yeah, until then.